Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie, if you are new here. And in today's video, I want to do my springtime base routine. So back in January, I did my winter one, but now it's time to show you guys how I do my makeup in the spring, specifically how I do my base in the spring. So it's always a little bit different from season to season. So if you guys wanna hang out and see how I do my base in the spring, then just keep on watching. So I always do my eyeshadow first, so that is already done. I also already have some SPF on. I love a glowy SPF year-round, honestly, but especially in the spring, I love for my makeup to be super glowy and super blush heavy, so that's what I'm going for today. I do also need this specific makeup to last me a long time because I have plans this evening, but usually my makeup can can last me a decently long time. So in case you were curious, I have normal to dry skin. It's definitely more dry in the fall and winter and then more normal in the spring and summer, but it does have a tendency to get dry. I also have acne prone skin as well as acne scarring from being acne prone. So a lot of what I all of what I do <laughs> makeup wise is always going to cater to those things um, adding a little bit of coverage in certain places to cover up the scarring and the acne adding more hydration to offset being more normal to dry another fun fact for you guys is that I absolutely hate my face being sticky which means I do always year-round set down my entire face it just kind of fluctuates how I set it and you know what I do around that to make it a little bit more summery versus wintery and stuff like that so I'm still gonna set down my entire face but I also have products in my vanity that I use to kind of almost make it look like I didn't set my face but my face is still going to feel and last because it's completely set <laughs> I always start out by spraying my face I'm just gonna take the NYX bear with me prime and set powder or prime and set spray and spray a little bit on my face i do that before i put on any sort of primer sometimes i do it after my primer i was like testing that for a little while but i always just before any product really goes onto my face i always set down my face normally i would not when i'm filming these videos normally i would not grab from my makeup basket because i feel like it takes away from all of the rest of my collection but like I said at the beginning of this video I do need this makeup to last and a gripping primer like the elf jelly pop is going to make my makeup last so I'm going to use jelly pop as my primer today I'm just going to really work this into the skin the irony of irony of me just finish like just finishing saying I hate my face being sticky and then using one of the stickiest primers okay and then I'm gonna give that like 30 seconds to a minute to really like sink into my skin and get its tackiest okay so this is where like right off the bat things are going to start being a little bit different than my winter base routine usually I would take just like a little bit of a glowy product put it a little bit underneath my eyes maybe a little bit on my forehead if I wanted a little bit up there and then blend that out, spot conceal, under eye corrector, foundation, concealer, and then go in with my color products, right? When it is springtime, I actually like to wear even less foundation and concealer. So I'm going to start out with the Revolution Bright Light 4-in-1 Face Glow, which is very similar to like Elf Halo Glow, Charlotte Tilbury... Hollywood Flawless Filter, all of those kinds of products. And rather than just putting this underneath my eyes, I am going to put it everywhere. And what this is going to do is this is going to start as like a first layer of color on my face, of coverage. It does have the slightest tint to it. Where it'll be the most noticeable is like on my chin and my nose. And I don't care too much about this being like the most precise application. 
If I don't get it on every centimeter of my face, the world does not end. But it just kind of gets down a little bit of a base, a little bit of coverage, and a little bit of a tint and a glow, a lot, a lot of glow. <laughs> But as you can see, my face is already starting to look a little bit more corrected. You can tell it doesn't really fare too well with being blended out with a brush necessarily, especially this brush in particular, but it's not the end of the world. Next up, I'm just gonna take my spot concealer and I'm just going to not go crazy with this. Just put a little bit in a couple spots that I need just a little bit of extra coverage. I'm gonna let that cook for a second while I put on a little bit of under eye corrector, which is the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Corrector. And the biggest thing that that four in one face glow product is going to do is it's gonna put a layer between that really tacky primer and my bronzer and my blush, which is just going to make the bronzer and the blush much easier to blend. <laughs> okay, and then I'm honestly just going to take that exact same brush that I used for the face glow and just blend in. Again, I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just looking for just a little bit of an added layer of coverage in the couple places that I need it. And here's the thing, you might be enticed to just kind of stop here. Like my face looks decently covered. You could just kind of, you know, use a little bit of concealer, even everything out, just make it good to go, blend it out with a sponge so you don't see brush, brush strokes and things like that. Which is all fine and great if you want your makeup to last for like a couple hours. Even with a gripping primer underneath it, Makeup doesn't last if you're not wearing enough of it. You don't want to kick it on and put on a whole shitload, but also not having enough on it, your skin is just going to absorb the product and it's just going to just disappear very quickly. So you want to make sure you're wearing enough for it to last while also not wearing so much that it cakes up. It's a very fine line and it requires a lot of practice. But how I'm doing my makeup today is probably like my least full glam. Like I'm not putting foundation all over my entire face. Next up, I'm gonna go in with the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Bronzer in the shade Hey Honey, and I'm gonna take a brush and I'm going to actually underpaint. So I'm gonna start out by placing this bronzer where I want bronzer. I'm not too worried about blending it though. I care more about getting the product where I want it. I don't care about these harsh lines right now. I'm also not a huge fan personally on my own face of putting bronzer, especially cream bronzer, on my cheeks. Usually when I set down my, my cream bronzer with powder bronzer, I'll take a little bit down on my cheeks, but for the most part, I like to leave my cheeks to the blush and the highlight. I feel like adding too much in there in such a small space can get a little bit muddy. And I'm just gonna take a little bit on the sides of my nose, underneath my nose, and underneath my lip. And you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna do my, I am gonna just straight blend this though, but just the tiniest amount on my jaw. Again, we are not worrying about it being unblended at the moment. Underpainting is very much a trust the process kind of makeup. So this is gonna be a little bit of a sneak peek for a video that's coming out later this month, but I'm gonna try this out today, mostly because I'm still waiting on other products for that video, so, and I'm getting antsy to try it. This is the LYS Higher Standard Cream Glow Blush Stick. So I already absolutely love the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush, so I don't see why I wouldn't like this, but this is what I'm gonna use today. I'm actually gonna go directly in. No, I'm not, I lied. I'm gonna use my Velour Puff, I don't wanna do that. 
I'm gonna take some on my velour puff. I don't know how pigmented this is. Oh, okay. And again, I'm kind of just like loosely blending it. I'm not too concerned at the moment. I care more about getting the product where I want it and then I'll fix it up. I'm also gonna take just whatever's left on this and put it over the center of my nose. This blush was significantly more pigmented than I expected it to be. <laughs> Much more pigmented. The packaging on this is stunning. You guys can't tell, but it has like a, a pinky glitter reflect to it. It's very cute. Okay, now that I look absolutely insane, <laughs> it is time for foundation. I'm gonna use the A2O Lab Soft Matte Foundation, which is from Shop Massey. This is like $4. It's one of my favorite foundations. One pump is honestly probably gonna be too much, but we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna send it. I'm gonna take a brush, and I'm gonna pick up the smallest amount, and I'm gonna start out by kind of blending it around where I put those cream products. Again, I am picking up the tiniest amount when I'm doing this. And then again, picking up a very tiny amount. That was actually too much for one side, so I'm gonna do both at the same time. I'm gonna put it on my cheeks and then just kind of start stippling it over that blush. Not all the way, just kind of starting to blend it. And then I'm just gonna take whatever's left on this brush and just go over my nose. I had a big forehead, so I picked up a little bit more than I did for the, my cheeks. And I'm gonna start in the center, and then slowly just kind of start to stipple it out towards the bronzer. Now I'm just kind of making sure that I have the coverage on my face that I like. Aside from concealer, obviously. And as you can see, it was too much. I, I pumped out too much. And then I'm gonna take a damp sponge I'm gonna go ab over everything and make sure that I have no brush strokes. Also make sure that everything is nice and blended. I feel like I took it a little bit too much over where my cream blush was. So I'm gonna go back in and apply just a little bit more before I do concealer because concealer is also, what is this one hair? So really quick, I just grabbed that bronzer brush. I'm not picking up any extra product, but I am gonna pick up a little bit of product with my velour puff for my blush. This blush is really, really pretty. <laughs> Again, way more pigmented than I expected it to be, but very pretty. Okay, I did end up flipping my velour puff over and grabbing the tiniest amount of that cream bronzer and just intensifying it just a little bit in a couple places. This foundation was a lot more pigmented than I uh, expected it, that remembered it being. So it covered up a little bit more than I wanted it to, but that's okay. It's okay. I, it still looks good. So next up, I'm going to take concealer. I have here the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. And I'm literally, I'm not going to redip this. This one little bit that comes out, I'm just going to do a dot, a dot, 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 dot. Just a couple highlighting points and then obviously under eye concealer. Again, I'm gonna let that cook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another spray. This is the Morpheus Continuous Prep and Set and I'm just gonna douse my face. By the time that that is dry, I will be good to blend out my concealer. I didn't realize that my uh, SD card <laughs> was almost completely full. So I just quickly blended this out off camera while I was transferring over some things. So I just took, as I was blending on my under eye concealer, I just kind of cleaned up the sides of my nose as well. Obviously took it back a little bit over the blush. So it did kind of cool it down, chill, chill it out just a little bit more, but it's still like very prominently there, you know, like it's, it's still present. Everything from here on out is going to be pretty similar to how I usually do my base, like uh, the Underpainting is really the only kind of thing that I do a little bit differently. I guess technically I do underpaint with powders as well. We'll get into it. So I'm going to start out with powder blush and I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush in Always Cheeky. And I'm just going to press this 
not sweeping, not swiping, nothing. Just press this over where that cream blush is. And this is what I mean by kind of underpainting with powders as well. I am now creating spaces on my face where I don't have to put powder foundation down, which is just ultimately going to have my face be completely set, but not so set that it looks cakey, that it looks heavy. Um, it's still gonna let a little bit of like a shine and a glow through without being too much. Big fan of that cream blush, by the way. Next up, I'm gonna do the same thing with bronzer. I'm gonna use the ColourPop Pressed Powder Bronzer in Avila Beach. And I'm just going to press this where I put that bronzer. And usually now is when I'll take a little bit of bronzer, just like right at the very back. And then when I'm doing one side of my face, I'll typically just take whatever's left on my brush at the end. And that's when I'll do like the sides of my nose, just so there's not so much product on my brush. Next up is setting down my whole face. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna go back over my under eyes just to make sure there's no creasing there. And I'm also gonna kind of use this just to clean up the sides of my nose again but mostly just to make sure that I have no creasing underneath my eyes because I don't want to set creases, obviously. And then I'm going to, I'm so extra, if you're new to my channel, I'm so extra when it comes to setting down my face. I always use powder foundations and I have some powder foundations that I love underneath my eyes and some that I love on the rest of my face. And I have yet to find a powder foundation that I like underneath my eyes and on my entire face just literally cannot find one. So I'm starting out with a small brush into the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Powder Foundation, which is an under eye favorite, as you can tell. I'm making sure to look up when I'm setting. So again, I'm not setting creases into my eyes, but you can see how flat this side looks compared to this side. And I'm also taking this on the sides of my nose and just based on the size of this brush, also into that crease space right there. And I'm not like loading up my brush either. I'm just kind of picking up a little bit. I'm just kind of pressing it in. The biggest thing again here is pressing so we're not disturbing the product underneath. And then again, I think this is a brush size thing. So I always use this powder for it, but I'm gonna set down the tip of my nose since I don't have any color product there. And then I'm gonna set between my eyebrows. And I'm also going to take this up over my eyebrows. That way I know they have a good set. So when I go to put on, like do my eyebrows, there's no slipping and sliding. Also that usually really helps to, if I have a lot more eyeshadow on, it usually helps to kind of blend that area out a little bit more. This is the only one that I'm gonna use that's not technically a powder foundation, but for the apples of my cheeks, I like to use a product that's a powder that is has a little bit of coverage but it's not like it's not powder foundation full coverage um mostly just kind of blurs and tints and that i'm going to use today is the elf prime and stay finishing powder i'm going to go in with a slightly larger brush and i'm going to start out by putting the majority of that powder on the actual apples of my cheeks and then i'm going to take whatever's left on my brush and just run this back over the space and it's just gonna kind of smooth out that blush, make sure it's nice and blended and seamless with the rest of my face, as well as just make sure that that area is really nice and set. So you look at the difference between how like smooth and gradual that blend is versus this side. And then I'll usually just take a little bit of this and put this over where I had put the color products on my nose and underneath my lip again it's gonna set it down completely without like really disturbing the color there and then last but not least is powder foundation I love certain formulas of powder foundation I don't always have the easiest time finding the perfect shade batch for me so I tend to end up mixing together too 
Um, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Superstay Hybrid Powder Foundation and the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. Obviously, if you're following along and you happen to have a powder foundation that matches you perfectly, then you don't need to mix. But the Maybelline one is too yellow and the uh, e.l.f. one is too cool. Mixing them together makes my perfect like neutral undertone. And again, I'm just pressing this where basically on the rest of my unset face. And I'm just kind of loosely taking a little bit of this over the bronzer. Not a big deal if I need to go back in with powder bronzer, but it's just gonna make everything just seamlessly blend. The only thing that I know for my own face is that my chin breaks down the fastest. So I always add a little bit of extra powder there. And that seems to kind of deter it. Okay, I'm just gonna grab my bronzer really quick, pick up just the tiniest bit and just kind of swirl it just a little bit. Again, not super necessary. Okay, and now that my face is set down and by all accounts matte, I'm gonna start going in with my glowy products. I'm gonna start out with a blush topper. This is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso using the same brush that I used earlier. I'm just going to fluff a little bit of this on. So again, it's gonna start to add some glow. It's also going to re-intensify any of the color that I may have lost with my powders. And the reason why I'm putting my blush up here is I feel like that reads more as I got some sun. And I just like a, a little bit a little bit sun sun kissed i feel like tip of the nose reads as i'm cold and bridge of the nose reads as i got a little bit of sun so that's where i always put it in like the spring and summer summer <laughs> spring and summer and honestly the fall too winter is really the only time that i put it on the tip of my nose and then for even more glow I'm going to use the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Pressed Powder. So this is a basically translucent, very thin, very sheer, almost invisible glowy product. So this is just going to add just like a little bit of life to my skin. I use a big fluffy brush and I don't put this all over my face. I like it just in a couple spots. I go between my brows, just kind of flicking whatever's left over on my brush up onto my forehead. And my favorite place to put this is on the apples of my cheeks, just kind of flicked back into my blush. Again, this is gonna do a very similar thing to that kind of more sheer e.l.f. powder. It's just gonna kind of soften that line between where my skin tone is and where the blush is and just make it nice and seamless. 97% of how I do my makeup is just making sure that everything is seamless. And kind of one color fades into the next, into the next, and it just kind of looks, you know, again, seamless. I'm not, I'm not out here pretending like I, 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 this is my natural face, right? Like I'm not doing a no makeup makeup look and I'm not, pretending like this is how I wake up, but I do want everything to be really blended for even more glow. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of highlight. I'm gonna use the Revlon Skin Lights Highlight in Daybreak Glimmer. I'm gonna start out with my inner corners. Usually I would have my under eyes done by now, but I'm just gonna do that off camera with you guys, without you guys, so. And then when it comes to highlight, I still like I don't want like a 2016 over the top glow. I love a glow, I like a lot of highlight, but I like it really diffused. So I love a brush like this. This is the Eco Tools Soft Highlight Brush. That's just gonna kind of diffuse it all over the space. So I just kind of circular motions, brow bone down to the tops of my cheeks in just kind of like a C shape. Just diffused and glowy without being like too on the like too precise i don't i don't want i don't want precision here and then i'll take like just a little bit on the tip of my nose and just kind of blend it up 
And last but not least, I take a little bit on my finger and just put it on my Cupid's bow. I don't put any glowy products on my chin because like I said, my chin breaks down the fastest and I don't really want to look like I ate a bunch of like greasy pizza and I got it all over my chin. Next up, before I jump off, I always do this. I'm Again, I'm doing it a little bit too early because I would prefer to have already had my under eyes done, but it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Once I'm completely done with my powders, I like to take the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and fucking douse my face, okay? Like, just wet. I need it to be wet. What this is gonna do is it is going to melt down all of those powders on my face. Everything is still going to be powder set, but everything is just gonna be melted into one thing that's just gonna be on my face and just kind of look a lot more natural. And then while this is drying, because I definitely can't put anything on my face right now, um, once I have my makeup completely done and I am ready to move on with my day, I do use two setting sprays <laughs> just to lock everything in. I start out with the Makeup Revolution Super Fix Super Hold Setting Spray. This says ultra matte finish. I would strongly disagree, but it does a really good job at locking my makeup in. I actually think that it also makes my skin look more like skin. And then I also top it off with a little bit of the Milani Make It Last, again, just to lock everything in. The setting sprays are always going to melt down powders, even if it's a long lasting setting spray that's going to, you know, make everything last. But I mean, you guys can see this is already starting to dry down quite a bit and it's already like my skin looks a lot less powdery than it did. So. I'm gonna jump off and finish up the rest of my face. I will be right back. All right, so this is the final look. As you can see, once everything was completely sprayed down, like my face doesn't look powdery, but it is completely set down, transfer proof, good to go. And I just think that it's so pretty. It's so glowy and blushy and spring-like and just, I just love it so much. So I just wanted to show you guys how I do my base for the spring comment down below and let me know if you want me to do this for summer and fall as well please subscribe if you have not already it would mean the world to me like this video ring the bell do all the things i hope that you guys have an awesome awesome day i'll see you guys in my next one bye la, la.